Peplink has released a new 8.3 version of the firmware for all of their cellular connected routers, and despite the modest name, it is actually packed full of awesome features for RVers and cruisers. We've got the details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on Peplink routers. In particular, the firmware that powers all the routers from Peplink has been updated to version 8.3. And despite you know seeming like a minor point release, this is actually a really, really feature-packed, very, very abundant release with a lot of great things inside of it, it could have been worthy of a 9.0 name. We've been testing it for several months and meeting with Peplink along with our partners over at Mobile Must Have, giving them a lot of feedback and they've integrated a lot of ideas that are really, really wonderful for the mobile technomatic audience of boaters, RVers, cruisers. And um, we've been really excited to actually see this now finally come out. Some of the high level features, high level things that really excite us the most is there's a new synergy mode that lets you combine multiple routers into one to use like your old router along with a new one when you upgrade. There's a completely new user interface and, and basically a complete software overhaul for the Balance 20X, which takes what had been a top pick router and makes it a completely new device and all that much more better. And a whole lot of other exciting things under the hood and uh, that we're pretty excited about. So we're going to dive into some of these features and show off what you should be excited about. And then there's also a companion video to this produced by our friends at Mobile Must Have that gives you more of a hands-on tour of some of the stuff to be excited about. So let's dive in. Uh, first up, there are some changes to SpeedFusion Connect, which is the SpeedFusion bonding service that you can get from Peplink. That most routers came with a certain allotment of data to use during your first year. Um, that is their bonding service that lets you combine multiple connections together, and then at the server side, they um, will get you out onto the internet via their secure VPN. And to put more emphasis that there is a secure VPN behind the scenes, that this isn't just a way of fusing together your connections for faster and more reliable connect connectivity, it's also uh, doing VPN services and protecting your connectivity, they've rebranded it as Connect Protect. Kind of a minor change in name, but the more significant change is they've now gotten rid of data limits. So you get an allotment like 500 gigabytes with a Balance 20X or a terabyte of data for a year with a um, Max Transit Pro. Um, but now when your data is used up, that is considered high speed data. And when that is used up, rather than getting cut off for your bonding data, you actually now get unlimited data throttled to 10 megabits per second, which is still enough for Zoom calls and a lot of you know more basic usage. So, you know, if you're just using Speed Fusion in the background to you know make sure that your Zoom calls don't have any drops when you're bonding Starlink and cellular or something like that, well, you don't have to worry about running out anymore. So, unlimited data on a Speed Fusion Connect Protect. It's kind of exciting. But even more exciting is under the hood, the Speed Fusion engine, the, the software that does that bonding, has got a new dynamic weighted bonding algorithm that is better suited to mobile connectivity devices like Starlink and cellular connections that change their speeds from moment to moment as congestion and signal strength uh, changes. Now, in the past, Speed Fusion was really good and reliable and stuff, but if you had a very fast connection and a slow connection who are trying to bond them together or an unreliable connection and a reliable connection, the bad connection would really drag down your overall performance. Um, you know, despite the speed fusion bonding happening, it sometimes required manual tweaking or just removing the laggard to keep it from slowing your other connections down. The new dynamic weighted bonding algorithm, which has been in development for a while, but is now actually the default algorithm inside all these routers for speed fusion, does a much better job of combining different connections and connections that are changing dynamically over time so that your slow connections do not bog down your fast connections. And in our testing, it has made it a lot easier just to keep all of our multiple WAN connections turned on, not having to think about which one is slow, which one's fast, which ones might be bringing down the bonding. So under the hood, the new algorithm is much better. And there's also a new setting that you could turn on called TCP ramp up mode that is really well suited for things like Starlink, where there's a very fast download, but kind of a relatively slow upload connection. And this helps you have the speed fusion bond take advantage of the speeds that you have quicker. So rather than ramping up your bonded speeds slowly, it'll be shooting up like that. And we're definitely seeing that in real world testing. So this is some great changes under the hood that makes Speed Fusion all that more valuable than it ever has been before. Now, you know, 
speaking of, what if you want to have more WAN ports to combine together with this new speed fusion algorithm to do a bond together more different connections, but well, your router does not have all the WAN ports you need. Um, there's a new thing called synergy mode, which actually lets you combine together multiple peplink routers, just connect them with an ethernet cable, and they become kind of like a virtual um, combined synergized router that gives you one single control panel with all the combined WAN ports of the different routers brought together and you can then bond between them, load balance, route your traffic out different directions. And it seems like, well, why would I want to have multiple routers in my boat or RV? Isn't that kind of overkill? But there's actually some really really great ways to go about this. Like it's, if you have an older something, like an older uh, Max Transit Duo that a lot of people had that had two CAT12 modems in it, and you're thinking, well, I want to upgrade to a 5G device, like a BR1 Pro 5G. Well, that's only got one 5G modem in it, and you don't maybe want to jump all the way up to a BR2 Pro 5G, which has got two 5G modems, but is so much more expensive. Well, with Synergy, you could just add that new 5G modem, the Max BR1 Pro 5G, to your Max Transit, and then suddenly you'll have three cellular connections for a fraction of the hardware cost, and it's a great way to put your old router into ongoing use as you bring in something new, particularly during this transition time to 5G. It, Synergy is kind of a game changer. We think it does unlocks a whole lot of interesting potential. Um, if you need additional... Um, Wi-Fi is WAN. If you wanted to have one device's Wi-Fi radio dedicated to campground or marina Wi-Fi and your primary router's Wi-Fi dedicated to your local network, synergize them together and suddenly that becomes easy and possible to do. So some pretty exciting stuff with Synergy Mode. It's kind of advanced. We just did a webinar, a webinar for our members over the last month that shows off how to set it up and uh, gives you some tips and trips, tricks we've discovered from our testing. So members do go check out that webinar. It's uh, we show off this pretty exciting new feature in depth in that. Now, one other thing about Synergy Mode, for those who are following along during the beta period, when Peplink initially announced Synergy, it was going to require that Synergy have their prime care support contract um, paid for and up to date on all routers that you wanted to combine via Synergy. So, well, every new router comes with a year of prime care for the most part, but what about your old router that you're replacing with an upgrading to 5G? Do you really wanna pay um, for prime care for something that you're kind of uh, putting into a secondary status. We actually met with Peplink and you know, presented them that for our audience of RVers and cruisers, we're not enterprise deployments that put all devices under a support contract. We might have that for our newest device, but not our older ones. So could they consider not making prime care a requirement? And they actually listened to us, which is very exciting to see how receptive they were to that feedback. And so in the final release of 8.3, um, prime care is only required for the primary router and when you're synergizing two together. Um, the secondary router does not need prime care, but if you're doing a crazy install with three or four or five routers synergized together, which is not gonna be very common, the third onward would also need to have prime care or a care plus contract paid for. But really exciting to see Peplink be so flexible on this. It makes the, the situation that we think is going to be common of using Synergy with an old router and a new router to get more and more cellular WANs come together and Starlink together and bring in so many more WANs together, increasing your redundancy. We think it makes it now simple and easy and flexible. So we're very excited about that. Now, there's one other feature that is um, new on 8.3 that brings more WAN options to people on devices that have paid up prime care. And this is the new virtual WAN port feature, which, you know, say you've got a device that's only got a single WAN Ethernet port and you've got a lot of Ethernet ports. The virtual WAN feature will let you turn one of those into an additional WAN port. Or if you've got a router like this one that's got a, a WAN and a, a, a LAN, just two Ethernet ports, you can make both of those WAN using one of them as a virtual WAN. Or if you've got a managed switch somewhere else on your network um, that has supports VLAN technology, you can make one of the ports on that other Ethernet switch a WAN port. So you can plug your Starlink into that down the road or something like that. And you've got a whole other WAN port to use for wired connections, which are usually better to use than a wireless and Wi-Fi connections. So um, the virtual WAN feature, again, is something that you get one extra WAN port with you have an active prime care 
uh, support contract on a device. If you want up to three, you can buy additional licenses individually to unlock more Ethernet WAN ports. So this is, again, another great way to bring in more flexibility and redundancy. It makes it easier to put together complex set complex setups. And particularly for those of us who are trying to bring together wired Ethernet from something like a Starlink or something like a T-Mobile home internet or from a, a other device that has got um, you know, Ethernet WAN that you want to bring together. Well, having just one Ethernet WAN port is usually not enough. So suddenly virtual WAN feature in 8.3 makes that a lot easier and a lot more flexible. Now, one of the other biggest, most exciting changes for the coming in 8.3 applies specifically to the Balance 20X router, which has been one of our top picks for a while as it's got a lot of capabilities for the price. In particular, it's got built-in um, kind of a low-end cellular. It's got a module for a, a second cellular. You can go all the way up to 5G and the module slide. It's got a lot of Ethernet ports. It has a USB port for tethering. And so it has a lot of capabilities and it starts at 549 for the Cat7 version, which is what we most recommend. And it gets even cheaper if you want a lesser built-in modem. So it's a very value price device with a lot of capabilities, but it had some major downsides. For one, the user interface on it was based on Peplink's kind of office user interface, not their mobile user interface. So it was difficult to manage and did not mesh with any of the documentation and tutorials that we've shared. And it did not have Wi-Fi as WAN feature, so you couldn't use it to talk to uh, campground Wi-Fi or Marina Wi-Fi or something like that if you wanted to use Wi-Fi as your upstream. Well, 8.3 firmware, brings the complete the user interface from the mobile devices to this. So it has a much better user interface and it now matches the Mac's routers. So it's got the mobile friendly user interface. And as long as you're paying for prime care on this, it has Wi-Fi as WAN now as a built-in feature. So you get two more additional WAN ports for uh, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi. And you know, one of the great things about the Balance 20X is keeping prime care paid for after that free first year it's only 49 dollars a year so suddenly 49 dollars a year keeps this rocking as a really great router it is a great companion to use with starlink to bring cellular and starlink together and um, combine them uh, another device that is getting some significant changes thanks to 8.3 is peplink's max adapter this is an external usb connected cellular modem this is the 5g version that is an additional cellular connection that you can plug into a windows laptop or into a Peplink router like the Balance 20X that has an ether, uh, a USB port for tethering. But in the past, when you connect the Max adapter to a Peplink router, it was kind of a dumb connection. It treated it more like Ethernet. You had no control over the cellular connection basically at all. In 8.3, when you plug this in, it's just like having a, another additional cellular modem. So we've got this plugged into our Max BR2 Pro, which has two built-in 5G modems. And plug this in, we've got a, now a third 5G modem with all the advanced controls that you could normally do just for the internal modems are now available for this external one. So you can do... Um, manual band selection to lock on to particular cellular bands. You can, you know, uh, you know, do those sort of adjustments to really tune and tweak your connection. So it makes the Max adapter now suddenly a much more useful accessory that is worth considering. Another feature, and this list is getting long, so we're going to start going quicker, but another feature that is useful for people who are upgrading from 4G to 5G is the new two antenna mode on the 5G routers that uh, Peplink is offering. Um, because of all 5G modems by design use four cellular antennas, four by four MIMO, and most um, Cat12 and lower um, 4G devices that people might be up upgrading from use two cellular antennas for two by two MIMO. And well, if you've got a two by two MIMO antenna up on the radar arch of your boat or on the roof of your um, RV, um, it might be difficult to bring those new additional antenna wires down to upgrade your antenna at the same time you're upgrading your, moto, uh, your router inside. Um, so the new two antenna mode puts the 5G modem into a mode that uses just two of those antenna cables. So you can use your old two by two MIMO antenna. Um, it does sacrifice some performance. It does, you know, because you're, you're not taking advantage of the potential for those extra two antennas to add to your signal and add to your speeds, but it does give you kind of a bridge incompatibility until the time comes down the road where you might want to add an additional four by four MIMO antenna on your roof. So a simple little feature. We've got some instructions in the tutorial, the article that goes along with this that shows you where to turn that on because that's kind of a hidden feature. But for those of us in RVs and boats who are upgrading, well, this is now a great way to do that. So Good on Peplink for adding that. Now, there's 
plenty of other stuff in this firmware release. We've got a companion article that goes along with this video that goes into some more of the features. There's smarter ways to juggle your connections so you can like route all of your, your, your game consoles to go out one particular connection that has maybe unlimited data. You can route all of your smart TVs to go out another connection that might have no blocks on 4K streaming and so on. So there's some a lot more new advanced stuff there. There's some advanced stuff for uh, more advanced users as well. So check out the companion article that goes along with this video and you could dive into that and see some of the other cool new things Peplink has rolled out. Um, and also be sure to check out the other videos that we are putting in this, embedding in this article. And if you are a member, check out some of our webinars where we're going to be going deeper into how these features work and how to specifically set them up. Now, videos like this and content like this are made possible by our MIA members over at the Mobile Internet Research Center. Um, because the members fund us and we're not focused on sponsorships or advertising, we are able to really kind of go deep into hardware and help people understand the best ways to have the most capable and redundant ways online that they can possibly have or to understand their needs and realize that maybe they don't need all of this extra gear. It's all about finding the balance that works for you. So again, this is an update on Peplink firmware 8.3. It's a very exciting release despite the modest name and we encourage you to check it out and uh, let us know what you think of it. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.